फ्रेंड्स लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द प्रोटोकॉल्स एंड टेक्नोलॉजीज वी यूज इन ए सी आई फेब्रिक आई स्टार्ट विद फर्स्ट वन आई हैव नेम्ड फोर प्रोटोकॉल्स हियर द फर्स्ट वन इज एल एल डी पी इट इज यूज फॉर डिस्कवरिंग द डिवाइस एट लेयर टू इट्स फुल फॉर्म इज लिंक लेयर डिस्कवरी प्रोटोकॉल यू मस्ट बी अवेयर अबाउट सी डी पी विच इज अस्को डिस्कवरी प्रोटोकॉल प्रोपराइटरी ऑफ सिस्को बट दे आर नॉट यूजिंग इट हियर सो इन द ए सी आई फेब्रिक वी वॉन्ट टू डिस्कवर द लीफ एंड स्पाइन लेट मी शो यू दिस इज द डायग्राम लेट से दिस इज द एपिक कंट्रोलर वन and it is connected to leaf 3 when leaf 3 gets powered on then with the help of this lldp apic 1 comes to know about the leaf 3 okay and also the interface on which it is connected and with the help of lldp this leaf 3 comes to know about the detail of spine 1 spine 2 3 and 4 and similarly with the help of lldp other devices are also discovered this information is then passed on to apic because apic wants to manage the complete aci fabric so once we log in into gui then apic will display the devices which it has discovered credit goes to lldp therein we can uh, define the names point number 1 is done now i'll move towards this second dscp dynamic host configuration protocol so this dscp is basically used for allocating the ip address to each device which is there in the aci fabric this is a layer 3 fabric so we need to have ip address assigned how that will happen with the help of this dscp this is your apic controller actually what happens when when the apic controller is booted or initialized for the first time we have to key in some details and one of the details that we enter is the subnets which will be used to assign the ips in the fabric let's say i have entered 10.1.1.0/24 so with the help of dscp the ips will be allocated or assigned to all of these devices in the fabric and remember that the interface where the ip will be assigned is known as loopback 0 so loopback 0 of all of these devices will receive the ip dynamically let's say the spine 1 has received the ip spine 2 is 202234 and then uh, leaf 1 is let's say 101234567 so this is how the dscp is really helpful and this ip represents the vtap address vtap is a terminology term of vxlan which means vxlan tunnel endpoint every device is a vtap device vtap 1 2 3 4 5 and the ip will be vtap ip so this is how the ip addressing is done i don't have the privilege to show you the installation of this apic controller but yes there are some uh, options which we have to fill in i'll just give you a snapshot which will be helpful it's not very complex it is just that we have to supply some information like the vlan number the subnet which will be used and how many ap controllers we are using the third isis since this is a layer 3 fabric so we need to discover the devices at layer 3 so that devices can become neighbors and uh, we also need to build the routing table because we have to reach each leaf and spine that will only happen if we have the routing protocol so isis is a routing protocol we are using intermediate system to intermediate system this is an underlying protocol we don't have to enable it it is by default enable and uh, i told you it's basically used for discovering the spine and leaves which are here known as vtaps the ips which were assigned by apic with the help of dscp will be known as vtap addresses okay build routing table and host based routes host based means this ip this will be considered as host based network okay and let's say the ip of this is 106 and it will be represented as 106/32 so this is a network so routing table has to be built for that we use isis underline protocol we don't have to worry about enabling it it's by default running The last one is VXLAN, extensible VLAN. This is an extension of VLANs. Actually, the VLAN that we use has a limitation that we can only create up to four zero nine six VLANs in a device. It is, uh, I believe, sixteen bits. That is why it is up to four zero nine six only. But with this VXLAN, it has a large range, up to sixteen million 
VLANs can be created. So this is really a big thing. And it has another feature that it is used for connecting separated layer to VLANs. Means the VLANs which are separated using L3. Let's say that you have some server here, ESX VMware environment, ESX1 here, and here you have ESX, here you have ESX2. So you want to enable mobility, means uh, you want to move the virtual machines from this physical host over to this physical host. But there is a layer 3 between that. So what we will do? We need to create an overlay. This helps in achieving that thing. It builds overlay means L2 tunnel over L3. This is one L2 means one broadcast domain. This is another broadcast domain. This side inside there is L3 and on the top of it, it will build tunnel. So after that, what will happen? This L2 will be extended to this. So you will be able to move the virtual machines using V motion function. There is one concept of V motion the device or the devices of this domain will be able to see the devices of this domain because both sides will become single side virtually like this is l2 this is l2 there is l3 in between so you want to connect this with this you have to use vxlan okay so l2 on the top of this l3 you will learn more about it going forward good thing is you don't have to enable it it is predefined it builds layer 2 over layer 3 fabric. It helps in mobility of VMs using vMotion and connect or extend the layer 2 domains. And there is one more protocol which is used known as Coop Council of Oracle Protocols. It is basically used for discovering the endpoints. Means the information about the endpoints which are connected to leave or leave switches will be uh, known to all of the spines like this there's one server connected this leaf will be aware about and similarly there is one server 2 connected here s1 wants to talk to this s2 it sends arp entry arp request for this ip let's say the ip is ip is dot uh, 109 just for the sake of one example its ip is uh, 108 it sends arp request to this leaf what leaf does leaf it opens that arp broadcast packet it notes down the IP address of the server 1 and find out which port it is connected to. Let's say it is connected to 1 slash 1. And then it forwards this information to one of the spines. This table which each leaf maintains is known as local station table. I'll talk about it at later stage but I'm just giving you some overview or some idea. In the COOP protocol, the spines are known as oracles. Okay, this is Oracle 1, 2, 3, 4. And these leaves will be known as citizens. Okay, let me write it here. Citizens. So the information about this local station table will be shared with one of the Oracle spine, which will then synchronize it with other spines or other Oracles. Like let's say this, this spine has come to know about the information about S1. It will then try to synchronize it with other oracles like three two one and this synchronization will happen through leaf leaves so ultimately leaves will also come to know about these servers means where the server is connected so these oracles will maintain proxy table known as global proxy table so eventually this is the way each spine will come to know about the devices which are connected to leaves so it helps in synchronizing the details so this is achieved with the help of coop protocol console of oracle protocols pines are known as oracles leaves are known as citizens just an overview for you i wanted to explain about the protocols which are used in aci fabric i hope it's been informative to you thank you so much